Have you ever taken the time to browse through some of the cell phone games offered by your service provider? If so, there's a chance you probably ran into a few games that caught your eye and you wanted to play on your mobile. However, you took one glance at the price and you were probably disappointed. But not nearly as disappointed as you were whenever you took your chance and downloaded the game thinking it would be good. Then you realize you spent about five, six, seven dollars on a piece of crap. And don't get me wrong, some cell phone games are actually pretty fun, but there's really no surefire way to know if a cell phone game is going to be good or not. Some service providers offer demos, but not all of them. So today I wanted to show you three mobile games that people commonly mistake to be as good just because of the title, but then end up being disappointed in the end. Here's my review. First off is Mega Man 2. It may seem that this game would emulate perfectly on a modern cell phone, but sadly in this case it's simply watered down. For one thing, everything is focused on Mega Man and the small areas surrounding him. I guess it makes sense for a small screen, but if you played the original Mega Man 2, this may throw you off a bit. The graphics are okay for a mobile game, but they look really funny. It looks like it was done in Microsoft Paint and put together with Game Maker. It doesn't really look identical to the NES version. Another funny thing is whenever Mega Man goes through a door to fight a boss, he literally walks through the door. In the original one, the door opened and he walked right in, but in this version I guess they missed that detail. Speaking of detail, the Wily Castle at the end of the game isn't linear. You get to choose what Wily level you want to go to, and there's no map-like screen. It's all on the list. The gameplay is very slow compared to the original NES version, but since the controls are kinda stiff, I think it's best that it runs slow. This game would be crazy hard to play with these controls at full speed. The sound isn't so good either. I mean, I understand they had to use midis to keep the file size to a minimum, but they could have at least included some sound effects. There are no sound effects whatsoever in this game, just music. Overall, Mega Man 2 is at least playable on a mobile phone, but if you decide to buy it, please take these things into consideration. The next game is Sonic the Hedgehog. I should first mention that when you buy this game for however much the service provider charges you, keep in mind it's only the first part. Yep, that's right, in order to play the full game you have to download and buy two parts. This is probably the biggest turnoff for this game, but aside from that, it plays decently. Sonic goes pretty fast like he's supposed to, but occasionally the frame rate falls here and there. In some levels it's hard to control Sonic like in the Marble Zone, but in the main parts it plays somewhat smooth. The music is true to the original despite the fact that it's MIDI, and unlike Mega Man 2, this game actually uses sound effects. The sound effects do sound bland, but they are pretty good for a mobile game. Something else I should mention is that the special stages have been removed from this version. If you finish a level with 50 or more rings, then you're automatically rewarded with a Chaos Emerald. This may be a problem for some, but keep in mind that it is only a mobile game. So in a nutshell, this game is fairly decent for a mobile game, but its biggest flaw is the fact that you have to buy it in two parts you would end up paying anywhere between $10 to $14 total for the full game. At that price, I would just get the Mega Collection on Amazon, which contains the original and a few bonuses. And finally, the one I've been curious about for the longest time, Street Fighter 2. I bet you're wondering how this was made possible on a mobile. Well, they made it possible, but they took out several things. The graphics look pretty great, and they almost look identical to the SNES version, but there are a few things that are missing like the Versa screen before a match. Instead of showing the mug shots before a fight, it's just the sprites. Also, the character animation is different upon battle victory. The backgrounds perform no animations whatsoever, and at some levels, certain parts are missing. Also, the ending is made up of text, no images depicting what happened. In terms of gameplay, the characters move really slow, and their moves are frustrating as hell to perform. But since the game is slow, it gives you time to perform these moves. This game is super easy. You can literally stick to one attack the entire game and you can win with ease. I beat the game on the hardest difficulty using Doll Slim's Fierce Punch only, and it was a success. The music is okay, at least it sounds like the original somewhat. Alright for a mobile game. And just like Mega Man 2, this game has no sound effects whatsoever. Overall, it's alright to have in your phone, but if you want a guaranteed decent Street Fighter 2 game that's portable, I recommend the GBA version. I know I shouldn't expect much out of a mobile game, but after playing games like this, I know that a mobile cell phone this day and age is more than capable to produce a pretty decent game. Again, these games aren't 100% bad, but they are flawed, and depending on who you are, you may or may not enjoy these games. Anyways, I hope you found this video to be helpful in some way or another, and until next time, keep gaming.